Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Busy, busy day. Uh, you know, I think Ooh. it's... Yeah, you said it all. Oof. Yeah. She said it all. Well, without further ado, temporary flight restriction notice gone out via notice to air missions communication. This is a notum closing off all airspace around Washington, D.C., from the surface to 99,000 feet until further notice. This type of all-encompassing closure simply does not happen. Something big is up. This is from QMUM. Now, the reality is this is from everybody. <laughs> everybody that pays attention to these things. Oh, yeah, Zeta Talk is talking about it. Everybody is talking about it. And this is uh, the Hal Turner show. They're talking about it, too. As you see here, this this type of thing just doesn't normally happen. And, and, and what it is, it's until further notice. Until further notice? Usually you get these notums, and it'll be a certain time because they're doing something. It might be an, a military exercise. It, it may be the president, you know, flying out, flying in, and will put do a little notum. Until, until further notice is very, very weird, to say the least. Um, pilots you know, who do not adhere to this following notice may be intercepted, detained, interviewed by law enforcement. You know, you, you got to comply, otherwise you're going to have military jets tailing you. What do you feel about this? Do you, do you, do you sense anything, or is this info blocked, or... I, well, in a way, I feel a heaviness and I, I feel a darkness surrounding it. I feel some a lot of heavy hearts and I feel a lot of solar plexuses and throat chakras uh, not feeling too good. Um, throat chakras being closed. A lot of people taking a deep breath. Uh, I, I think whatever this is, whatever is going on, somebody is hoping that this thing is just simply going to pass and they can take a deep breath. But we are... You know, the eclipse is good and it has upcoming uh, good good results. But with the eclipse, during the eclipse, this is when I feel a lot of bad things can happen because this is when the light is going to be blocked. But on the upcoming to the eclipse, this is where the light is shining on everything and all the information around it. So uh, eclipses have like a two, you know, there's two pieces about them, the upcoming eclipse. And I, I think it plays into this. I, I think we are seeing a lot, a lot of activity that we might not normally see. But on the eclipse, we might have some kind of a blackout. And I, I was going to suggest that to other people that on the day of the eclipse, don't make any big decisions. Sit quiet and do your reflecting. But uh, the energy around it is what we are really keeping an eye on because that that activity is going to be high. So. I don't know. This could be on a way to some type of blackout of information. They might not want people to know very many details. So um, it's just really interesting. You know, obviously we are getting very close to October and thus we're getting closer to the election if it happens. Um, there's so much going on right now in the world that truly is unprecedented. There's there's a lot that's unprecedented uh, for our time period cargo flight from iran supposed to land beirut airport has turned around after israel informed the air traffic control at the airport that it would launch airstrikes against the plane if it landed in beirut so uh, israel is not allowing uh weapons shipments to go in uh to the area is what this is saying now vice grad 24 is very pro-israel um this source is very pro-israel Absolutely. And so, you know, again, it's one perspective on what's going on. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it it's something we've talked about, that greater picture that a lot of people are waking up to. Um, yeah, this is just one part of the picture. And by the way, there's a notum for Beirut Airport. Uh, all foreign airlines that in order to resume their flights, they must apply officially to DG. CA, all military flights and humanitarian aid 
on military aircraft shall be pre-approved by the Lebanese Army Command before landing if Israel lets them land. This is another you know, aspect to look at it. <clears throat> there is the prophecy of Damascus' destruction uh, that's in the Bible. The Bible contains prophecies about the destruction of Damascus, the oldest continuously inhabited city in the world. According to Isaiah 17, uh, again, when you, when you really look at it, it's going to say Yahweh. If you look at the actual words there, it doesn't say God. It says Yahweh will destroy Damascus, making it a ruinous heap and uninhabitable. It's also reiterated in Amos 1, 3 through 5, which describes a war between Israel and Syria, resulting in the disappearance of Damascus as a major city. So, you know, again, when you look to, cre to the King James or the NIV, um, it, it's not giving you the actual translation. Uh, it should say, thus saith Yahweh of the Elohim. <laughs> yeah, so this is something that many people have talked about for a long time. They've also talked about this in regards to Ezekiel 38 and that the timing is probably similar. Many people think that we are looking at Ezekiel 38 basically right now. It's the build up to that period. If you want more info, then come come join us on Patreon as we absolutely could not cover this on uh, YT. Um, and yeah, I do think uh, that the Messiah that's been awaited for by you know those people with the 12 tribes is is here in the flesh but it's not what you think it's it's not what you, again the jewish mind doesn't view uh the being jesus yeshua as their messiah they're still waiting for their messiah because their messiah is uh, a military leader a military leader and uh, there's actually maybe more than one person on the planet that may fit that bill all roads in and out of Asheville, North Carolina, are still closed. Sounds like Asheville is still only accessible by air. Unless you head up from I-26, and even then you will encounter closures before the city. Um, yeah, this is just ginormous. This is Reed Timmer. Uh, he, he, he's, he's one of those crazy guys that's always following stor storms everywhere. Um, yeah, he, he, he is you know sharing something from his perspective that this is just as bad as Hurricane Katrina. And it's all this way inland, in the mountains. Think about that. Think about that. I mean, we were just talking uh, to our, our sister, Leah, and thankfully her and Neil are safe, but they share that there's National Guard everywhere and the, no power. And the little town of Waynesville, one of my favorite places in the entire country, uh, it, it looks like something out of a bad nightmare movie with National Guard everywhere and no 911, no nothing. It's just crazy. I know. It's, it's horrible. No 911, the National Guard everywhere just looks really, really awful. And oh, gosh, I, I look at these little towns and, you know, you can't help but wonder, you know, what are what are they doing to them? You know, is that also slated for... For like you know a, a cell city unfortunately i mean this is a beautiful little area and people are so happy there and it, it, I, and 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 it's just devastated i think the thing in the message that stuck out to me most is that the national garden all of them are just everywhere everywhere so that's really concerning sending out our prayers to everyone and leah is the same leah that shared her um really after death experience she was clinically dead clinically dead came back um and she is <laughs> somebody that does believe in yeshua because she met him on the other side and yet she doesn't believe that yeshua is what the modern fundamentalist christianity would make him out to be uh as you know again she doesn't believe in the concept of blood sacrifice and and original sin and really, she said all that she saw on the other side was just pure love. Absolute pure love that is not judgmental at all. And one thing she shared with me um, through the years, as we've known each other for a while, uh, was her visions. And, and she had had visions of seeing 
um, this type of scenario as far as um, National Guard everywhere, everything in chaos. And so, you know, she's seen these times coming too. Uh, and I find that people that have had that near-death experience, you know, again, our friend Dawn's another one that we love and and think very highly of that's that's gone through this and again sh what did she find nothing but love and, and compassion on the other side no judgment no vindictiveness no dogma so there's nothing to fear from that side this here um this really touches me um because again sometimes one person is going to have to calm down the other person in these times and and let them know it's it's okay because we are not our things my car is gone um, okay, okay. The, the, everything's gone it's all gone okay. and you can hear her and she's you know he's a little bit in shock and she's saying it's okay I'm okay. You're okay. We're okay. We could end up getting another car. We, you know, as long as we made it out okay, we're okay. I think after watching that water and the forest that it hit, um, thank goodness it was just the car. But I can understand him being in total and complete shock. And this is gonna, this is gonna really stick with him for a long time. And this is what trauma does. In that moment, you don't really know the damage that's being done to the brain. Um, but it's a lot of damage. PTSD is not something to be taken lightly. When traumas like this happen, you have to start to work right away to stabilize yourself and rebuild those bridges, those bridges of trust and understanding and knowing that things are going to be okay. So she had a really good partner there that, or, or he had a really good partner and she could see that all he needed to know in that moment was it's okay. And that's, that's where you start from when it comes to trauma like this. It's like, okay, right now in this moment, it's okay. And then you move forward. But these things just stick with you for years and years. So my heart goes out to these folks. Yeah, sometimes traumas stick with us for lifetimes, literally lifetimes. And so your prayers are making a difference. I, I do think they are. A lot of people have been drawn to the fact that there were three bridges, I could, uh, three dams I could think of that were in danger. And this is one of them, Nolichuk, Nolichucky River. It's crested. The, d the dam is still intact. So now it's going to recede about a foot per hour. Um, so they'll evaluate how safe it is. Uh, there, there was three dams that appeared to be ready to let go, and none of them let, let go. And I really do think that it's our power of intention, and I don't mean just our family here, but out there people desiring to see a good outcome to to see people b survive you know and make it through these times your, your prayers do make a difference uh and this is ryan hall y'all uh you know it says the internet's favorite weather man um yeah you know not too high on ryan anymore after some uh debunking he was putting out there about certain things that we know are actual uh, actually real Yet I will share this, that they are looking at the potential for Hurricane Joyce as well. Well, you can see her, uh, Joyce is there, but there's also other areas that can develop. So, you know, be aware there could be another uh, storm in the Gulf in, in maybe a week or so. Um, this, William Ackes, I was really glad to see the last couple of posts of his because he is an MD. He's a medical doctor radiologist, oncologist, cancer researcher. Um, and yes, he's been very critical of certain things, you know, regarding the plague upon the land. But he also uh, had had done what most doctors would do and, you know, still be behind that pharma of a big kind and other substances. And it's good to see him recognizing colloidal silver. Yeah, colloidal silver, nano sil silver, cancer cured in three months. You know, this is what we want to see is we want to see more MDs opening up their eyes to what they'll call alternative. But in reality, it's it's tried and tested remedies that are 
generations old generations and you know don't have certain money behind them and certain indoctrination behind them so yeah you know i mean we we are always encountering people we encountered a, a gentleman yesterday out in public you know we've been doing things out in public a bit um and you know he's stage three cancer and immediately i start with you know <laughs> I just can't help it. I can't keep my mouth shut. You know, Cindy will tell you, I just start talking to everybody right away and it's like I'm making a video. But that's because we know, we've seen so many times, people that do those alternative things, I, gosh, it seems like more often than not, they get okay. I'm just saying. Well, they get their lives back, you know, and, and um, if they are doing exactly what the, M, the DR says to do, more often than not, they are not feeling very good and it, they continue to go downhill. But if they are doing the alternatives that we suggest, which I hate calling them alternatives, those should be the first go-to that any of us do as the natural ways, they get their quality of life back. And we are not doctors. You know, so no. again, we have to say we're not trained you know, medical professionals in Western medicine. We just go by what we see. Yeah, we just share with you our experiences, which number Nobody. way up there. You know, the amount of people that we have talked to um, over the years is, as far as, you know, in what we do with, you know, all sorts of energy work, spiritual coaching, uh, recommendations on diet, health, nutrition, things like this. I mean, all different sorts of things, just wellness, general wellness. Uh, we way up into the hundreds if not thousands you know of people probably in the thousands I, I really do think so we've had a lot of interaction and also been able to see how people have done over longer periods of time and there's definitely trends I mean it's it's really quite clear you know I, I, I again think back to one person in particular that was uh, first reached out to me in 2018 and, you know, didn't follow uh, the rec what we would do. Yeah, you know, all we could say is what we would do. And her family pushed her down the usual route and, you know, did everything, all the above. You know, ouch. And, you know, the RAD thing and the CHEM thing. And, you know, was not around maybe a year and no longer with us. Um, very sad and, and really is something I hate to see. I want to see people get better and and do well and, and live up to their whole potential. I mean, this is what we are all about. We really want to help people. This this is what drives us. Well, you want to see people live. You want to see people smile. And you want to see people have a good quality of life and not just simply be in pain. And I know sometimes at certain points in our lives, if there's something that we need to work through uh, if there was a time in our life where we simply numbed it up and we just plowed through and we didn't stop to allow our emotions to process sometimes that does have a buildup and it does have to come out during some type of a healing and it can be very very difficult it can be very frustrating and you might feel that you're just so tired and you don't want to deal with the pain anymore but what I've learned in this work, working with myself and other people, you, you, unfortunately, you don't, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. If you were supposed to process that pain, the pain needs to be processed and the things need to be done. And, you know, there's uh, so many things you can do to work on healing yourself. Now we know we can do that you, yes you do have to be pretty darn strict with with the diet and that was probably the hardest part for me was to just no sugar absolutely none but you know it gets easier if you're making the decision it's like oh you could die or you could have some sugar well then it becomes pretty easy to not eat sugar and and that's not forever so a lot of people are going through a lot of pain when they're going down a, a natural path but it's not forever. And that's just what I really want to encourage people. If you've started on this natural path to healing, give yourself some years. But you know what? It's worth it. It's absolutely worth every bit because then you have that quality of life back. This is another um, Black Marsh 
homestead, another homesteading uh, family, and this, I, I'm not sure if they have kids or not, but this young man and his wife are, you know, they're leading by example. And, you know, they said right here, they proudly can say they produced and gathered 100% of the food they've eaten over the last 100 days. 100%. Man, that's impressive. So far, we've eaten seven dwarf goats, one ewe, one ram, two drakes, one duck hen, one rooster, about a dozen rabbits, uh, potatoes, lots of onion, huge quantities of zucchini, a lot of carrots, and then cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, uh, sheep milk, sometimes as cheese, uh, 30 kilograms of honey, lots of pears, apples, plums, and walnuts, a few dozen chicken eggs, the hens went on strike, uh, wild edibles too, blackberries, Chinese lanterns, uh, broadleaf plantain seeds, and other stuff. You know, what can you say? Yeah, that's just bravo. Um, absolutely bravo. And now I understand there's vegetarians out there too, but, and I was a vegetarian for the better part of 20 years, most of that time. Interestingly enough, I shifted from basically paleo keto um, to vegetarian, never really vegan. Um, and it was as much anything, it was an experiment. It was really an experiment. And, you know, it's been an experiment the whole, my whole life, really. <laughs> and um, I had to kind of unlearn some things that I thought I had um, in order to get through these times. Because, you know, both Cindy and I were in a period where we didn't really feel well. We had been exposed to high doses of what we would say is radiation purposely from a big uh, flying triangle. Uh, and it really hit us. And we lost Zeke and Sassy developed a whole bunch of small tumors. But the little Sass has, has bounced back and, and, you know, she's doing well. And then we got these two guys, these two behemoths, and, uh, you know, they keep us on our toes. But both Cindy and I right now, today, feel healthier than we have in years. And I think compared to most of the population, I would venture to say we're probably healthier than 99 point something percent of the population. Um, it's because you've really got to, in many cases, uh, let go of a lot of dogma each person is extremely unique and at any one time in your life you may need something that you may never need again it all depends on where you're at and we have really learned a ton uh during the last like five years well we did and and it wasn't about what we read out of books um, i really want to emphasize that we worked with our bodies we listened to our bodies so there were some things came up that we didn't necessarily like but you know what the body is responding to this and the body is healing and and for me it was the amount of animal fat that i needed to regulate my hormones and I tried to walk a path where i wasn't not eating animal fat in my body it just fighting that radiation thing my body did not do well it's like it was a huge train crash it was the biggest mess ever and me growing up on meat and potatoes it's like my body said no i need some structure here so believe me i didn't take that lightly knowing that i needed the animal fats and i was really worried about my spiritual progress but i'm okay i am okay so i i i do um encourage everyone to explore that about themselves um if you know there's there's other things that we didn't know about just eating the plant foods and these are the oxalates if if your organs are not functioning super great your liver your kidneys and you're taking in a lot of oxalates um which is the really super superfoods that they tell us about whoa these are superfoods well they can also carry a lot of oxalates that can make you extraordinarily sick especially if your organs are not running super well you know uh leafy green spinach i mean that was a tough one when i found out oh wow that could actually be making me sick 
but I didn't just read it. I experienced it. So, you know, trial that's and error. El trial and error, trial and error, process of elimination, um, really paying very close attention to your body and its needs. Um, these are all things that uh, a lot of people don't do. We, we, we assume that the information in the book is correct and the person is, you know, they are really smart and they probably are, but that does not mean it's going to apply to you. No, you know, so I had seen this earlier. The average body can handle about 40 to 50 milligrams of oxalates a day. One cup of spinach has about 700 milligrams. So a salad made with two cups of spinach is 28 days of oxalate toxicity. You know, what we have to recognize is we are in a more toxic environment now than we've ever been by far it it just looks to the skies you guys know what we're talking about here and we our bodies can't handle there this is why you have so many people with turbo cancers there's there is one main reason and there's a secondary reason to that we've talked openly on uh patreon about it clearly but you guys know you know one is frequency and the other is um ouch you know, and yet there's much more than that. It, it is. It's it's what's in the in the clouds. It's what's in the water. It's all the added ingredients in all the foods. Uh, it's the GM. It goes on and on and on. So then when you add stuff that 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, wouldn't have sent you over the edge. Now it certainly does. And inflammation uh, absolutely is the root cause of most disease in the body. And so you don't want to be inflamed. So really, what do we, what do we, what we're faced with the choice of which is the, the least amount of toxins for the most amount of nutrition that I could take in. And that's going to depend on where you are. That's going to depend on your environment. It's going to depend on, you know, your blood chemistry, your makeup, uh, everything. It really depends on you, your energy levels. You, you know, ex there's so many things. Every person's very unique. And this is something that my first naturopath had stressed to me. Um, you know, because I wanted to go on a diet that my naturopath said, oh, well, that'd be fine if you, if you live down in the Caribbean. But you don't. You live in New England. So it's not going to be good for you. There's so many different variables. That's what we want to get in uh, and, and have people understand. No one size fits all. So you can't just simply, you know, just lump everybody into one category and even the same person at different phases in your life especially if you're a woman that's going through the change um or you know a man that's going through the change too where all of a sudden your testosterone out output is lower and you know the testosterone production of the average guy nowadays is nothing like it was a couple of generations ago there's again the estrogens there's the plastics i mean it just goes on and on and on uh, so again, each person is very, very unique. Um, I was starting to show this before I got pulled off. Uh, wow. The Amazon Basin is just fascinating. Why are people not looking for evidence of advanced, advanced civilizations? Sita wants to know. She wants to know why. Why are they hiding the advanced cities that were bigger in the Amazon than many European cities that we're all very, very familiar with? Because it changes the whole paradigm. It, it changes the entire paradigm of what, what the books say. And they can't have humanity waking up totally. And they're trying to slow our, our wake-up role. But, but we're understanding, hey, you know, there's something really wrong here. And look up to the sky and, and know it is for yourself. Wait a minute. Hey. What's going on there? Why is that one cloud that's shaped in a triangle kind of going against the grain? They've been here the whole time. They've been watching you the whole time. There are tons of cloak ships. You know, we've seen ships uh, of all types. We've seen the triangles many times. I, I saw... When we were uh, in Texarkana area over by Bossier in uh, Louisiana, we would see the triangles out in the open almost. And, you know, we've seen them 
out in the desert in multiple places. I've seen them in Florida and in the Carolinas. And I also first saw one up in uh, Milford, Connecticut, over Charles Island. Yeah, absolutely. And it freaked my daughter out. But it's more than just the triangles, because the triangles are, are basically our military. Yes, they have some help from uh, ETs. And you could label some of those beings as inner earth beings as well. But I've also seen a ship from the Galactic Federation with my own two eyes that Cindy had channeled in New Mexico. We were channeling our contact at the Galactic Federation. And when uh, she, Cindy woke up, I was looking down at her. And then I looked out and looked up into the clouds right outside the window. And then I saw, you know, a, a typical saucer pop out from a cloud just to let me know it was her and then take off and so yeah absolutely we've, we've never been alone it's just this is exciting because you know everybody's going to know soon you know for these beings it is it's very exciting to watch our progress because we're on our way to a whole ne a whole nother level uh, another level of understanding and being and yes there's many of them from the galactic federation there's also many of them that are not part of the galactic federation that are simply observing and that's okay and we are growing a and it's like you know parents that look down and they watch their children grow and expand and the children don't know what's going on in the mind of the parent and how the parent is just super curious and super proud with every little thing the baby does you know i mean uh, when you have a child it's like oh they rolled over and it's like a celebration and then oh they crawl and it's a celebration it's oh they walk it's a celebration you know and even if you have pets puppies kittens when they learn something it's such a huge celebration and that's where our um uh, beings that watch over us and love us like parents that's where they're at they are watching and they are going to celebrate when we take these huge huge steps absolutely yeah you know, show the love and share the love with uh all those other creatures of the mother you know take care of what you would call your family or if you view them as your pets absolutely i love seeing these people rescuing and saving these animals that that really shows compassion and love uh who wouldn't you know go and take take a dip in cold water or warm water to go save a little angel like this because these beings are closer to angels in some ways than, than most of humanity is uh at this point in time but that that will change that will change as we work on the ascension path they really are. They're so close to angels. I mean, these guys give us the opportunity um, to be really, really good beings. And they give us the opportunity to do great things. They give us the opportunity to feel total and complete love and understanding. They give us the opportunity to feel mercy. They give us the opportunity for so much. I mean, animals, they are our everything. And we should hold them all, every single one in high regard. You know, when you have pets, they cannot ask for water. They cannot ask for food. Not the way that humans can. They do not have that voice. So we have to learn to speak to them. We have to learn that, hey, this creature is in trouble and in pain. And we can make it better. We can do something different. It breaks my heart to see so many people so easily just, you know, their dogs, they're not fixed. And, you know, maybe they just get pregnant and have puppies. And people just dump them they just dump these little angels and it's not just dogs it's cats and it's everything else and i mean that's the part that we really need to work on so that's highlighted and it's like we can do better we can absolutely do better for you know the collective of these angels absolutely loka samasta suki no bhavantu om shanti 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 may all beings everywhere be blessed happy and free and may our actions work to help those beings and help all those that are in need to be free and live up to their potential to be their unique version of source. If you guys need to make an appointment with, appointment with us, it's Evolutionary Energy Arts at Gmail. Allow a couple of days for us to get back to you and then uh, we'll set up an appointment and usually it's about a couple weeks out. As always, guys, source bless and namaste. Namaste.